Good afternoon. I'm here uh, in my sunroom. Uh, this is Monday afternoon and I am going to start taping some daily stories with Miss Sharon. Uh, books that I have at home that are wonderful uh, Bible storybooks or um, parable type books that uh, I would like to share with you. Um, you can feel free to uh, watch one as a family devotional or a bedtime story or however you would want to do it. But I hope to do one each day. And today I would like to start with a Bible verse. This verse is from Ephesians chapter 3. And you can find it in verse 17 through 19. A little background on this um, Bible verse. Ephesians is a book in the New Testament written by the Apostle Paul. He wrote it as a letter to the Christians in Ephesus. If you lived in Ephesus, you were called an Ephesian. Thus, the name of the book, Ephesians. Paul wrote this to them because he loved them because he helped start the group, the church in Ephesus on his missionary trips. And he's writing to them in verses 17 through 19 and telling them how much he wants them to understand and comprehend how deep, how wide, how long, and how high is the love of God for them. He says, I want you to, I hope that God will help you understand the length and the breadth and the depth and the width of God's love. And I would like to say that I want you to know how much God loves you too. And there's a song that I learned from a vacation Bible school that Xander attended. And I would like to sing you a little bit of that song now. Um, the children in the third grade class know this song and um, they really like it. So I wanted to share it with you. You gave up your throne for a manger, traded a crown for a cross, laid down your life for a stranger, for all who are broken and lost. You came down from the heavens so we would know how deep, how high, how long and how wide and how far love goes. How deep, how high, how long and how wide and how far love goes. Now I'm going to move the camera down here to show you the book. So excuse that for a minute. And let me turn this around. Well, how do I do that? Got to turn it around. Okay, as you can see, I'm technologically challenged here. I can't get it to flip around to the book now. If I stop it, then I'll have to start all over again. Um, hmm. Hello, boys and girls. It's time for another story time with Sharon. Today we're going to learn a song called I Am Special and we're also going to read a book, You Are Special. So I'm going to sing the song once before we start the story and then we'll sing it again at the end of the story. 
I'm a special person, there's no one like me. I'm glad I am Sharon, that's my name, that's me. God thinks I am special, he thinks you're special too. I am glad cause I am me and you are you. You are special by Max Lucado. The Wemmicks were small wooden people. All of the wooden people were carved by a woodcarver named Eli. His workshop sat on a hill overlooking their village. Each Wemmick was different. Some had big noses, others had large eyes. Some were tall, others were short. Some were hats, some others wore coats, but all were made by the same carver and all lived in the same village. And all day, every day, the Wemmicks did the same thing. They gave each other stickers. Each Wemmicks had a box of golden star stickers and a box of gray dot stickers. Up and down the streets, all over the city, people spent their days sticking stars or dots on one another. The pretty ones, those with smooth wood and fine paint, always got stars. But if the wood was rough or the paint chipped, the Wemmicks gave dots. The talented ones, the ones who could lift big sticks high above their heads or jump over tar bo tall boxes, got stars. Still others knew big words or could sing pretty songs and everyone gave them stars. Some Wemmicks had stars all over in them and every time they got a star it made them feel so good. It made them want to do something else and get another star. Others though could do little. They got dots. Punchinello was one of these. He tried to jump like the others, but he always fell. And when he fell, the others would gather around and give him dots. Sometimes when he fell, his wood got scratched, so the people would give him more dots. Then when he would try to explain why he fell, he would say something silly and the Wemmicks would give him more dots. After a while, he had so many dots that he didn't want to go outside. He was afraid he would do something dumb, such as forget his hat or step in the water or say something silly and then people would give him another dot. In fact, he had so many gray dots that some people would come up and give him one for no reason at all. He deserves lots of dots, the wooden people would agree with one another. He's not a good wooden person. After a while, Punchinello believed them. I'm not a good Wemmick he would say. The few times he went outside, he hung around other Wemmicks who had lots of dots. He felt better around them. Then one day, he met a Wemmick unlike any other. She had no dots or stars. She was just wooden. Her name was Lucia. It wasn't the people that, it wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers. It's just that the stickers didn't stick. Some of the Wemmicks admired Lucia for having no dots, so they would run up and give her a star, but it would fall off. Or others would look down on her for having no stars, so they would give her a dot, but it wouldn't stay either. That's the way I want to be, thought E. Punchinello. I don't want anyone's marks. So he asked the stickerless Wemmick how she did it. It's easy, Lucy replied. Every day I go see Eli. Eli? Yes, Eli, the woodcarver. I sit in the workshop with him. Why? Why don't you go find out for yourself? Go up the hill, he's there. And with that, the women who had no stickers turned and skipped away. But will he want to see me? Punchinello cried out. 
Lucia didn't hear, so Punchinello went home, sat near a window, and watched the wooden people as they scurried around giving each other stars and dots. It's not right, he muttered to himself, and he decided to go see Eli. He walked into the narrow shop. He, I'm sorry, he walked up the narrow path to the top of the hill and stepped into the big shop. His wooden eyes widened at the size of everything. The stool was as tall as he was. He had to stretch on his tiptoes to see the top of the workbench. Punchinello swallowed hard. I'm not staying here. And he turned to leave. Then he heard his name. Punchinello? The voice was deep and strong. Punchinello stopped. Punchinello! How good to see you. Come and let me have a look at you. Punchinello turned slowly and looked at the large bearded craftsman. You know my name? The little Wemmick asked. Of course I do. I made you. Eli stooped down and picked up Punchinello and set him on the bench. Hmm, the maker spoke thoughtfully as he looked at the gray dots. Looks like you've been given some bad marks. I didn't mean to, Eli. I really tried hard. Oh, you don't have to defend yourself to me, child. I don't care what the other Wemmicks think. You don't? No, and you shouldn't either. Who are they to give stars or dots? They're Wemmicks, just like you. What they think doesn't matter, Punchinello. All that matters is what I think, and I think you are pretty special. Me? Special? Punchinello laughed. Why, I can't walk fast, I can't jump, my pain is peeling. Why do I matter to you? Eli looked at Punchinello, put his hands on those small wooden shoulders, and spoke very softly. And slowly because you're mine that's why you matter to me Punchinello had never had anyone look at him like this much less his maker he didn't know what to say every day I've been hoping you'd come Eli explained I came because I met someone who had no marks said Punchinello I know, she told me about you. Why don't the stickers stay on her? The maker spoke softly. Because she has decided that what I think is more important than what they think. The stickers only stick if you let them. What? The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust my love, the less you care about their stickers. I'm not sure I understand. Eli smiled. You will, but it will take time. You've got a lot of marks. For now, just come to see me every day and let me remind you how much I care. Eli lifted Punchinello off the bench and set him on the ground. Remember, Eli said as the women walked out the door, you are special because I made you and I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop, but in his heart he thought, I think he really means it. And when he did, a dot fell to the ground. That is the story of Punchinello. You are special. I want you to remember that again, this is a modern parable that uh, you could talk about with your moms and dads uh, along with the other one that I read uh, earlier uh, this week. Um, I hope that you enjoy these stories and um, we'll sing our song one more time. This time you put your name in, okay? I'm a special person. There's no one like me. I'm glad I am. That's my name, that's me. God thinks I am special. He thinks you're special too. I am glad cause I am me and you are you. 
I'm a special person. There's no one like me. I'm glad I am. That's my name. That's me. God thinks I am special. He thinks you're special too. I am glad because I am me and you are you. Have a great day. Enjoy the sunshine. Bye-bye.